If you're someone like me that does not like taking medicine or being anywhere near a hospital, then I've got eight great tips that will greatly improve your health and maximally reduce your chances of coming in contact with those. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I'm NFA Teso and it is always a pleasure to have you here. Now, I said I've got eight secrets. I'm going to call them the eight laws of health. And in this video, we're going to study the first law of health. If you've subscribed to my channel, thanks for stopping by. It's going to be a wonderful time. And if you have not, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of those laws of health. So today we're looking at health law number one, air. Yes, the very air you breathe. Now, record has it that millions of people suffer from a wide variety of ailments that are partly caused by an insufficient supply of oxygen. Yeah, and an outstanding health educator also had this to say. In order to have good blood, we must breathe well. Full, deep inspirations of pure air which fill the lungs with oxygen, purify the blood. They impact it to a bright color and send this life-giving current to every part of the body. Now, the importance of air to life goes without saying. Air is the most vital element for man. It is a known fact that one can live for weeks without food, can go for days without water, but without air, man will perish in minutes. And this makes all the sense in the world because when you think about the creation of man, you would recall that air is what made man a living being. You know, after God did all the forming and all, the Bible says God breathed air into man and man became a living being. So basically, air is the most basic and vital element for man's survival. Health personnel tell us that it requires an abundance of oxygen in and around the body to keep the physical organism in top condition. Why is this so? It is the oxygen in the air that purifies the blood and contributes to the production of body heat and energy. Now there are millions of people suffering from different kinds of diseases that are related to poor breathing habits. Most people do not breathe correctly, and this continues to weaken their health. And it has been discovered that if people would just breathe well, most of these ailments will no longer be a problem. So it's not just that you're breathing, it matters more that you're breathing correctly, that you're breathing well. So yes, you've been breathing, but it's very possible that you're not breathing correctly. Now let's do a quick check to see if you've been breathing correctly or wrongly. Check number one. When you breathe in and out, what part of your body moves? Your shoulders and your chest or your belly? When you breathe in, do your shoulders go up and your body become elongated? Like... If you're doing it this way, then you've been breathing wrongly. This means you've just been filling your chest with air and when it's just your chest that fills with air, the lower part of your lungs do not get enough air. So you're getting that all wrong. It means your breathing is shallow. And if your breathing is shallow, it means you're not getting oxygen all the way down to the bottom parts of the lungs, which is where many of the small blood vessels that deliver oxygen to your cells are found. Check number two, you're breathing with your mouth. I mean, I know you can breathe with your mouth, yes, but it is much better to breathe with your nose because when you take in air with your nose, the nostrils are able to filter the air and remove whatever form of impurities might be present and they can warm up the air to the exact temperature that is beneficial to your body. So the nostrils filter the air, warm the air and humidify the air in a way that your mouth cannot. 
So it is much more beneficial that you breathe with your nose. So if you've been breathing with your mouth, you've been cultivating a poor breathing habit. So having considered these two ways you might have been breathing wrongly, let's talk about how you can do it correctly. Now, the first one was that vertical breathing where, you know, when you take in air, it's your chest and your shoulders that react. Now you're going to do it the right way. And this time it's your stomach that gets filled with air. Now, this is how it works. When you take in air and feel your belly, the diaphragm contracts. And when it contracts, your lungs expand and are able to take in air all the way to the lower parts. And then when you exhale as well, the diaphragm returns to its normal position, thereby expelling the air from your lungs. Okay? So when you breathe in, ensure it's your belly, your stomach that is getting enlarged, not your body getting longer or your shoulders rising or just your chest expanding. Ensure your stomach gets the air first and the diaphragm contracts to release the air into your lungs. That way, your lungs are getting just the right amount of oxygen. So this is what you do now. Relax your shoulders and your neck. Breathe in through your nose for two seconds and then exhale with your lips. Let's do it. So how did that feel? I bet it felt wonderful. You could literally feel things coming alive in your body, right? When you did that exercise, did you notice how the air went straight into your stomach and then you could feel your lungs expand? I practically felt it. So with this simple exercise, we've been able to handle the two ways you might have been breathing wrongly. We used our nose and then we took the air all the way into our stomach, okay? Without having our shoulders and chest expand first. Keep that in mind whenever you do your breathing exercises so you know that you're getting it all correctly. Did you know that breathing even stops pain? Yeah, it turns out that it is not any pain killing properties in pain relievers that deal with pain. They don't really help with pain. What those pain relievers do is that they produce hyperventilation, which makes the patient begin to breathe faster, taking in more air. And the more air, the more oxygen that goes into the body, the more the pain reduces. So you see, if you can just practice good breathing exercise properly, you might not have to take pain relievers for those pains. So whenever you're having headaches or neck pain, why not give this exercise a try? And when this good breathing becomes a part of your life, then you just might be excused from some of those pains that come from stress and all because your body will be fully functional. Deep breathing reduces pain and relaxes the entire system. Isn't this some valuable information we can all make do with? Now, before I give you a few tips that will help you breathe correctly, I'd like to mention about four things that make people cultivate bad breathing habits. Point number one is stress. When you're stressed out and tired, your body just takes in short amounts of air. You just don't breathe deeply when you're stressed out and tired. It's difficult, okay? So stress is one of the things that make people develop bad breathing habits. Number two is poor posture. And one of the things that greatly affects posture is sitting. You know, we spend a lot of our lives sitting down. You know, from your childhood, you had to sit long hours in school and then you go to college or the university where you have to sit for even longer hours, you know, and then you get a job where you have to sit again for hours and many times you're, you know, hunched over your keyboard and you're typing away. Before you know it, this hunch you develop kind of puts pressure on your lungs because it collapses the rib cage a little and then that affects the amount of air you can take in, okay? But when you're seated correctly and you have good body posture, you would be able to take in the needed amount of air. So bad posture is one of the things that greatly affect people's breathing. 
Number three is obesity. You know, the more fat, the more tissue around the lungs. And this also puts pressure on the lungs and limits the amount of air one takes in. That is why most obese people, you find them like almost panting all the time. You know, they are unable to breathe in deeply. They just breathe and it stops just at their chest. You know, this affects many other things. And number four is air pollution. When the air is bad, your body is naturally inclined to not take it in. But because it has to breathe, it just takes in little amount of air. And this, over time, affects your breathing habit. Okay, for instance, you find yourself in a room full of smoke. Even if you want to breathe deeply, you can't. Your body just won't let it, okay? It's protecting itself. But while protecting itself from this danger, it's opening the path to other dangers, you know, by not giving the body the amount of oxygen it needs to function properly. Now, having said all of that, let's go back to the tips on how to improve your breathing. The first thing is you need to start your day with good breathing exercises. You know, it's not going to take so much time, just five to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if you can afford it to just do those breathing exercises. It's called the pursed lip breathing. That one we did earlier, you know, you relax your shoulders and your neck, you breathe in. It's, it will be very nice if you do this in a sitting position. You take in air all the way to your stomach for two seconds and through your nose. Then you expel the air. If you can stretch it to a four seconds duration, that is even better, okay? So you exhale for four seconds and then you go over the exercise. And if you want to do it lying down, it's also okay. It's even called the book breathing exercise. You know, you put some books on your stomach or you can just put your hand. The idea is so that you notice when your stomach rises because of the intake of air, just to make sure you're doing it right, okay? And then you go over it, the same process, exhale through the mouth, pursed like this. Okay, so ensure you do these exercises regularly. Practice deep breathing. Even in the course of your walk, you can just take out, you know, a minute or two and do this deep breathing. It's very, very important for the well being of your body. Next tip is to go outdoors as much as you can. Don't stay cooped up in your room all day. You know, find time to just walk out and take in some air. It's so beautiful out there. You know, go out there, appreciate nature appreciate God's handwork and then while you do that you're taking in good air this is good for your general well-being and make sure you're breathing correctly while you're out there next tip is to avoid stuffy rooms ensure your house is properly ventilated at least once a day open the windows and the doors you know let air just cross the room and it's very good because this process has been known to eliminate some impurities that tend to do well in damp areas and you know get to affect your health so make sure your room is always properly ventilated and especially when you're asleep so much happens when you're sleeping. We're going to talk about that in another video, so you don't want to miss it. Again, if you haven't subscribed, do that so that you're part of these eight laws of health that will keep you in top-notch condition. A notable health personnel also had this to say, it is of the highest consequence to your life, health, and happiness that you keep fresh air in every room in your home especially in your sleeping rooms. A lot of air flowing through the house is a necessity to good health. Another tip, though I already talked about it, is to sit properly. It will help your breathing. Now, before I tell you the very last tip, which is the most important, you should know that it might take a while to train your body to breathe properly again, but ensure you find time to do these exercises daily and you will soon begin to notice the difference. I'm sure when you did that little exercise we did a few minutes earlier, you could feel things coming to life in your body. Well, when you continue to do this, you're going to notice you know, increased amounts of energy, decreased stress levels. You're going to notice you have a brighter mood and higher focus ability. 
Not to mention those pains that will go away. Yes, the headaches, the neck pains will all go away. With so much benefits attached to proper breathing, there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't give this a shot. Now, over to the very last tip I talked about. Ventilate your life itself. Yes, your life. Now, when you take anything away from its source, it begins to dry up. If you take a fish out of water, it dies. If you put a lion inside water, it dies. If you pull a plant out of the earth, it dies, okay? So anything detached from its source cannot be sustained. Now, remember I told you earlier that man became a living being because God breathed into man, okay? So if you want to keep living, it makes total sense that you stay connected to the source of air. Hmm? You need God in your life. That's all I'm saying. So one of the sure ways to ensure your health is to open the windows and doors of your heart to God's fresh air of salvation. It will not just give you physical life on earth. It is both refreshing, wonderful, and it means eternal life. So yes, you're very alive and healthy while you're on earth and your eternal life and destiny is secured as well. To ventilate your life in this manner is really fun and simple. And I deeply encourage you to do that. To receive God's fresh air of salvation into your life, please say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Because I know today that it means a lot to you that I am healthy, both in my body and in my spirit. I come to you today knowing that you are the life-giving spirit. I ask that you come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Give life to my body, life to my spirit, and life to my health. Thank you, Lord, for this miracle of health and life, both now and in eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations and welcome into the benefits of health law number one. There are seven more to come and I know you don't want to miss it. I'll do my best to link the videos up, but you need to do yourself the favor of subscribing to the channel as well and turning on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in subsequent videos. God bless you.